Okay, now here's what we're making. It's a pinball machine where here the paddles have these little springs down at the bottom, helping them go up and down. You can custom design whatever you want inside of here, and I'll show you some ideas. And there's a little launcher on the side. Here's some corrugated plastic. It's the same stuff as cardboard, just plastic. There are a bunch of popsicle sticks used on this thing. I'm going to use a, a couple of skewers and some cut up bits of straw in making this thing. And the last little thing is I'm going to need a spring. I've got a, uh, a collection here. This came from Harbor Freight. I'm just going to grab two equal size springs. It doesn't matter. I could use these little ones. I could use these really long ones. For the launcher, I need this uh, long bolt. This is a quarter inch bolt. The plunger, the end of the plunger is a T-nut. So I've got a pack of T-nuts and some washers to work in there to help strengthen up the, the launcher. So here's the deal with making one of these. You need to first figure out, okay, what are the edges going to be doing? Where is this plunger going to go? And then last of all, you're, you're going to place these on the inside. So to figure out how to make those nice edges, you don't want to start with five different pieces and try to make a box. What you do is take a piece of corrugated. This is plastic, but cardboard works the exact same way. I'm only cutting through the top layer. So first I took a ruler, I made a nice straight line. If you're a kid who's never used a utility knife before, have an adult do it for you. But you're going to make a cut through only the top layer of here. I did the same thing here. I got a nice straight line. Ignore the squiggly line. I got a nice straight line. And I cut through the top layer. Now, the problem is that this corner right here is going to be connected and in the way. And kids always cut it out, but you don't want to do that. You only want to cut through one side of that box. And now it's, it's loose like this. Well, here's what happens when you come over here and fold it up. Now, I didn't cut through this other side, remember. It's going to make a nice long hinge. And those boxes that I didn't fold will fold around the top. This is one of the little tricks you pick up doing things. This is already a nice, strong box shape. And I haven't even done anything yet. Now I've seen people glue corners like this. It, it works a little bit, but what's better would be to use a little bit of shipping tape, some little bit of packaging tape. So with the packaging tape, cover that entire folded over section. I've got some warm glue in there. The tape is holding that glue in place. That's nice and tight. That is as strong as a box. Same thing from over here. This glue isn't going to hurt anything. Not sure it's going to help even a little, but with a little bit of shipping tape, I'm coming around from the back using the tape to hold that corner in place and making sure that I wrap all the way around. So now I've got a corner. I need to get a little plunger in here. So to do that, here is a quarter inch bolt, a nut. We'll have a spring. And to push the marble, I've got these T-nuts. So let's see how to put this together. The plunger is going to come through this spot that I just assembled. And I'm going to need to make a hole. Now, obviously, you can take a quarter inch drill bit and drill that, but if you don't have a drill, you're not out of luck. I mean, just by skewering a hole in here, I stabbed it with a skewer. I'm going to, I've seen kids grab hot glue guns and use the hot glue gun in this corrugated plastics case to just melt a hole. That's the size they need. 
That works. In cardboard, it'll be easy enough to just take a pair of scissors and ream a hole. Now, I spoke too soon before you put the hole. You want to make sure that you're putting it down where the marble is going to be. So here's a marble. I want the hole to be behind the marble. A lot of times the hole ends up being way up here and they have to do all sorts of nonsense to try to get it down. So my hole's a little bit on the high side. I may just come on over here and do it the right way. I'll put a marble here. That's where the marble's gonna be sitting when it's ready to launch. So I need a hole that's behind that. Just make sure that you're not putting it too close to the edge. When this is all assembled, we'll have to have the, the bolts in here and it, it can't be hitting the edge. You just saw me make a mistake on where to place the hole. If you make a mistake, it's okay. At this point, you still have four corners you could use to, to make a different one. Now with the very simplest, what we're gonna have is a spring back in here that is pushing the plunger back forward as I pull it back, okay? But a lot of times we'll find that this is a little bit squishy and wiggly and we need to make things a little stronger. So in that case, what I've done a lot of times is just take the popsicle sticks and made some supports on the inside, maybe in the bottom. And in this case, you can see that I built an entire popsicle stick frame for that spring to push against. The spring is right here. That's what's holding it back. This one is extra, extra strong. It doesn't wiggle side to side as much. It's, it's better because it has this. So if you decide to skip it, that's fine. However, I'm gonna show you myself making this. The first po things to make here are these two popsicle sticks that are sticking down into the, the plastic. So if I'm putting that here, I'm gonna make, actually make a little bit of a slit in the plastic where those popsicle sticks can go and stick into the plastic, that's gonna be very strong. So there's my first little anchor. There, now that is made. What I wanna do now is add the spring. Make sure there's a washer inside of here for this, so the spring can't slip back. I'm gonna add just a regular nut onto the bolt. And that regular nut and the T-nut can get smooshed together. If you don't have these, there's gonna be other ways to, to figure out how to put a nice flat spot on the end of this bolt. Ask an adult if you don't have something set up like this. But here's my launcher. Now, I've got the sides. I need to plan on where these paddles are going to go. The other thing I could do at this point is add a railing to hold that marble in next to the plunger. Start thinking about where you want to place these things. So if this is a full popsicle stick, that's going to take up that much space. Do you want a little gap in the middle? They should never be able to hit each other, so that's something to think about. Now I need to mark where everything's going to go. So here we are, and I want to make sure these paddles aren't going to hit each other. It, it's easy to put them too close, but you don't want them to hit. You need to have a gap in between, and real pinball machines have a, a, a larger gap than you would want in there. So when I have them in the spot that I want them, I'm gonna make a mark, mark where that is. Okay, now they're not really gonna be here, they're gonna hang down like this, but I put them like that so just to make sure they will not hit each other. All right, and I need a mark, maybe about a third of the way on both of them. That is what they're gonna swing around. So right here is how they're gonna move. They're going to move around that point I just made. All right, well, I'm going to make my two paddles and get that set up first.
So now that I've got the popsicle sticks, they're glued together, and I put the mini bits of straw right over that point where I want them to hinge, we're actually going to make that hinge. So I've got a little bit of skewer. I'm going to stab it in to that point. And see what we're making is this connection right here. So I need to get this skewer a little bit shorter. I need to get another one stabbed over there. I need to get this glued down. Here we go. So now that these posts are standing straight up here, before I slide this on and, and, and attach it forever, I'm going to attach the spring to the bottom of the paddle because this is really important. The, sp the spring is what makes the paddle work. So the easiest way to attach that spring is just to add a little tiny bit of skewer. You can see this little tiny bit and glue it right to it. I'm, when I'm done, I'm going to have the spring standing straight up. So the spring is going to be straight up on top of the paddle. And I also want to make sure to glue it pretty close, very close to the straw. You don't want it to be far away. So now that spring is attached, you can see the spring will extend as I push it. And what we're going to do is make the spring hold the paddle in the right spot. So when the spring is compressed, and nice and relaxed, it's going to hold it right where I want it. And then the paddle will extend and it'll flip right back to where I, where I want it to go back to. So I'm just going to ha grab the bottom of the spring, pull it to where I want it to rest, and I'll use a different skewer and mount that side of the spring right there. So there's my example. Yeah, that, that works pretty good. It seems like it's a little too low. It's pointed too low, so I'm going to move it a little bit. Now, when you're gluing a, a skewer into a, a piece of, into a board, the best way to do it is to stab through first. Don't try to just glue it to the board. Stab through the board. Then take the skewer out. Put some glue over that hole. And now what's going to happen as you stab it through again is that glue is going to be going through the board along with the skewer holding it in place so that the board is hanging on to it, not just a little bit of glue. So there's my little paddle on that side. Let's do the other side quick. Now the paddles are almost finished. I can see why there's, it's a good idea to leave a bigger gap. Right now, if, there's a, if I was playing this game, the marble would get caught between these two and there's no way to lose. So you need to leave a nice little gap there. But the problem is that these are not very strong. It's, it'll be easy for somebody to, to muscle it too much and break that right off. So I need to support something on the top here. Now there's all sorts of ways to do this. You could, you could throw a popsicle stick right over the top like that if you wanted to. Not, not the most glamorous of ideas. A solution that I've come up with before is to, to make a little triangle right here so that it's being held like that. You could connect the tops of these, connect the top to this to something else. Let me just make the, put a little triangles here. There, now with that little triangle piece here, supporting the top of the paddle, it's much stronger. I'm going to connect another piece to the top of this so that this piece can never come out. So there you have it. You want to be really careful that you don't put any hot glue that connects the straw to the, to the post. That straw needs to be able to move freely at all times. But I was able to do that. If you make a mistake and this all gets glued together, it's okay. Just start over. And here it is with the two parts together. I've got the plunger coming up the side, my paddles, and take a look at the uh, example projects that I've been showing to get ideas for what you can do in the meantime. You could have a ramp that goes into baskets. That, that could be a way to score points. You could have holes in the bottom where it drops in and gives you a point. You could have pedals that move. You could have a, a thing that, as you hit it, 
now it's this many points now it's zero points again there's no limit to what we can make with this have fun i hope that you make something amazing and i can't wait to see it